welcome to Cybersecurity Nonprofits July webinar. We are super excited to have Naomi Buckwalter here with us. She is the Director of Product Security for Contrast Security. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over cybersecurity nonprofit. And then um, I know you're all dying to ask Naomi your cyber career questions. So if you would um, put them in the Q&A as early as possible. Um, this is only 30 minutes, so we would like to go through as many as questions as possible. All right, so um, cybersecurity nonprofit um, is a nonprofit that um, empowers our community through inclusive and accessible cybersecurity awareness, education, and exploration. We have four pillars, which is inclusive education, cybersecurity awareness, diversity, equity, inclusion, and exploration. Um, we host a lot of events, presentations like this one, hands-on workshops, hackathons, panel discussions, trivia, and more. Um, our website is a wealth of information, such as a weekly blog, where you can learn all about cyber safety, threat hunting, careers, tools, CTF write-ups. Um, we also have career resources, breaking into cybersecurity, um, the different fields in cybersecurity, and more. Uh, we also have a cyber safety program, which helps families become cyber safe um, and aware in their real life. Um, and we have offered boot camps before. Um, we have some really exciting events coming up this summer. Um, we'll have a one day boot camp for middle schoolers. Um, we'll also have a fun security trivia game as well as backdoors and breaches, which is a really fun incident response card game. So Please follow us to find out more. Um, there's a lot of ways to get involved um, as a volunteer, as a member, um, submitting a blog, giving a presentation like this one, donating, sponsoring, and partnering. Um, and you can find out all that information on our website. I am happy to speak to you um, directly as well. Um, I'm just going to leave this up here so we can thank our sponsors and partners. Donations from our sponsors let us host high quality programs such as this one. We have a lot of sponsorship opportunities such as providing venue, hosting events, become an annual sponsor. And we also offer a variety of partner opportunities with different benefits as well. Um, we love donations, um, corporate or individual, um, your donations help us keep CSNP membership free and it funds educational webinars, hackathons, um, community outreach events, um, helping us provide free resources to underserved communities, increasing diversity in cybersecurity. Um, and we would really like to thank you for being here today. Um, feel free to contact us, provide feedback, join. Um, here are all the ways to become involved. Um, and finally, um, finally, I will stop sharing the screen. Um, I'm going to quickly introduce Naomi and um, let the Q&A begin. Um, so Naomi has a CISB and CISM, and she is the Director of Product Security for Contrast Security and the author of the LinkedIn course, Training Today for Tomorrow Solutions, Building the Next Generation of Cybersecurity Professionals. She's also the founder and executive director of Cybersecurity Gatebreakers Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to closing the demand gap in cybersecurity hiring. She has over 20 years of experience in IT and security, 
and has held roles in software engineering, security architecture, security engineering, and security executive leadership. As a cybersecurity career advisor and mentor for people around the world, her passion is helping people, particularly women, get into cybersecurity. Naomi has two master's degrees from Villanova University and a bachelor's of engineering from Stevens Institute of Technology. Um, so thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. All right, so uh, let's get started. We only have 24 minutes left, so I do want to hear from you guys. I want to help you guys get into cybersecurity because, yes, we do need more awesome people in cybersecurity. So go ahead and type in your questions in the chat. I know we have some preceded questions, right, Marta? We can start with those yes. while people put in your questions. But if you put in your questions, we're going to try to get them answered. And you can be as specific as you like. I would like to speak directly to people and not generically. Um, so if you have a question about your specific situation or you have a question about one thing, I will try to answer it and be as little, use fewest, fewest amount of words as possible. Just get to the point. So uh, I do apologize if I come off as blunt. I am working on that. But it's uh, sometimes more helpful, especially in the short amount of time that we have to just give you the facts and give you the information. So let's try for it. Sure. Marta, um, how's that sound? We have, awesome. Um, so we have one question, which I think a lot of people are dying to know. So a lot of people are absolute beginners and they're wondering what kind of se security talks, webinars, workshops, security fundamentals are required. Where do I even begin? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're an absolute beginner, that's going to be a little tough because you really don't even know what is out there for you to be interested in as a career, right? So let's set aside the things that you need to learn first, because the number one thing that I see all the time from people trying to get into cybersecurity is they don't even know what that means. They're like, we want to get into cybersecurity. I want to get into cybersecurity. Okay. What does that mean? Like, what about cybersecurity do you like to do? There's so many things to do in cybersecurity. So if you can't even answer that question, I can't help you. I can't be like, here's a specific webinar you should go to because this is the, the career path that you want to go in, right? Because if you don't know what career path you want to be in, how can I can you, how can I give you a webinar and something that will help you help guide you there? That's it's unfair to you. It's unfair to like your time. So the one thing that you need to know first is what about cybersecurity do you want to do? What is it that's interesting? Do you like to pen test? Do you like to like break things? Do you like to build things? Do you like to audit things? Like there are so many things in cybersecurity that that you can be good at, and and not one like one person isn't good at all these things. Like you're going to find these awesome roles for you. So here's a resource that I like to point people to. It's a personality quiz slash career quiz. Like it's it's two minutes long. It's super easy. Uh, I want to make sure it's still available. If you go to cybersecurity gatebreakers, cybersecurity gatebreakers.org, I'm going to type it in here in the chat, uh, slash quiz. Hopefully this is still up and running, but we haven't uh, let our bills run out. So, okay, here. Um, where can they see this? Hosts and panelists. Um, can I, I do can all email attendees? everyone as all the links as well. Well, can I share my screen? That'd be easier. Oh, sure. Boom, done. Okay, so if we're here, cybersecuritygatebreakers.org slash quiz. Let me hide my work stuff. If you, can you still see this? Yes. All right. So here, it's a two-minute quiz. This is going to map your personality traits based off of the Myers-Briggs personality traits indicators to a cybersecurity role. So at the end of this quiz, you're gonna get a list of possible cybersecurity jobs that you might be good at. And then you also get a little PDF. You can email these to yourself, all these PDFs about like what it takes to get into this role, how much salary you can expect, what kind of educational requirements are needed for that role. And then like in general, what kind of things are about that role that uh, that person will do. So I'm going to just really quickly just go through this real quick. I enjoy work environments that are fast. Uh, this is for me personally. Uh, I do my best work when I'm alone. I love seeing specific details. I like to work with large sets of complex data. Uh, it depends on the day, but I'll say in general falls. Uh, I like to, ooh, I like to build things. I don't really like to break it. I'm a highly organized person. Mm, I'm going to say, yeah, possibly true. I'm great at telling stories. Yes. Uh, rules are made to be broken. Absolutely. I like to multitask. False. Uh, hooray, your results are in. So this is my personality traits. 
<laughs> first one is IT project <laughs> manager, uh, which is hilarious because I am the director of product security at Contrast and I do a lot of project management here. Um, and so you want to keep going. So this is just one of many. So you just keep clicking next. Oh, this seems to be broken. I need to go find Y at Y. But if you keep clicking next, you should be able to get all of the uh, available career choices for you. So that is one. And then once you get to the ends there, you can email yourself the results and then go from there. You can actually get a lot of resources from that. Um, these are based off of the NIST NICE Workforce Development Framework for Cybersecurity. And, and like basically took those PDFs straight from that website. So NIST being the National Institute of Standards and Technology, that is a US-based government entity. And they do a lot of very good work with developing cybersecurity workforce. Um, that's one of many good resources. NIST NICE. Um, another one is cyberseek.org. You're going to find a lot of different career paths based off of what your interests are. So definitely use this quiz to start like to find out what career might you might be good at. And then from there, go to cyberseek.org to find out what the possible career paths and like how many jobs are open in your state and, and all these other things in that website. It's really good. So start there. I can't answer exactly like what webinars and what certs. Like it really just depends on what you want to do. And there's really good resources out there. Like cybrary.it is a really good one. They've got a, a wealth of information on the kinds of uh, the courses that you might want to take as a particular career path. Like if you want to do cybersecurity analyst work, there's going to be a like a career path for that. Um, other things like, I don't even know right now, it's been a while since I've been there. Um, pen testing, like there's a career path for that. For project management possibly, like there's different tracks and different levels. So cybrary.it is really good. If you want to do things in the cloud, I would even go straight to the cloud provider themselves. So AWS has a number of like great free training resources that you can go to. Just go to like Google AWS free training. And there's um, like a wonderful sandbox that you can play and you can open up an AWS free account. You don't actually have to pay anything. You just, well, that's not true. You do have to put in a credit card to open an account, but make sure that you're only using the free stuff and not having to like accidentally pay $500, which I've totally done. Uh, in a month just because you left something running. So just be careful. There's a lot of labs that you can follow, like tutorials. So you can just go step-by-step step and, and learn something. So that's the whole point is just get your hands on this stuff and just try to, to pick stuff up. It's going to be a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a lot of information at once. If you have a basic foundation of what how IT works and how like computers work and how networks work, you're going to be in a good position. You're not starting from zero. Um, it's going to be tougher if you're coming from a whole different field, like medicine, for example, or uh, teaching, like that's a little bit different, but you are, you are a pretty smart person. I'm pretty sure like most people can get this. You just have to really believe in yourself and put in that effort. Talk to as many people as you can. Don't just uh, study on your own. Like you want to get conversations going, meet people, uh, connect with people through Marta's group here, CSNP. They're probably very well connected. And so you're going to just ask, Hey, do you have anybody that I could talk to you, that you know anyone I could talk to you for this role. I'm trying to get into this role. Uh, do you know anyone who recently did that? And maybe I can talk to them for like half an hour. So you really want to ask, start asking these questions and be like, what do I want to be? You know, like what kind of career would that look like? And you're just going to get information from all different kinds of resources, not just from this webinar. All right. Okay, Good thank question. You. Yeah. Good answer. Um, so our next question is, we had quite a few career changers um, submit questions as well. Someone works in IT help desk and wants to become a SOC analyst. Someone has eight years experience in manufacturing, wants to go into security. Um, I myself came from electrical engineering and the person who's in manufacturing is also getting their bachelor's degree in cybersecurity and information assurance as well. Um, so they are asking, um, how do you get your foot in the door for this career change? And what kind of roles do you apply for? Because it seems that you need a lot of experience to get cyber jobs, but you, um, but they're out, been out of school for a long time, so they can't apply for internships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. So the jobs that are open right now for cybersecurity, they're overwhelmingly like in the 90 percentile of jobs of all open jobs, they're all from mid senior and above. So if you don't have cybersecurity experience, it's going to be really, really hard for you to 
get in. Everyone knows this. My nonprofit is trying to change that, is trying to change the minds of the hiring managers and the HR recruiters and stuff to start opening those more entry-level roles because it is possible to actually do cybersecurity as a truly entry-level person. But that's an aside. So what, what you really want to try to do is get experience any way you can. So um, I like to do home labs. I like to uh, go to uh, working groups. If that's not something that you're familiar with, Google cybersecurity working groups and get yourself attached to a working group where you are now giving people information rather than consuming information. So uh, when you are building experience in cybersecurity, it's all about how you're going to give back to either a company, to a working group, to an organization, to a conference, to a nonprofit. If As long as you're giving back, people are going to start noticing that. You can put that on your resume and be like, hey, I volunteered um, in this conference and I was helping with whatever it is that people help with conferences, like uh, introducing panelists or vetting speakers or something like that. Like you can actually volunteer to help with very popular conferences, security conferences, just Google security conferences near me. And there's going to be like a B-sides or even in the middle of the country, we have something called Wild West Hacking Fest. That's a really popular one in South Dakota. Like they're all over the country, You're at least in the United States. I don't know where you guys are based, but if you have just a inkling of like what kind of conferences that are around you, you can try to to if volunteer for those. They will accept you. Like you, they're not going to be doing anything technical for them. They're just going to be like, yeah, we actually do need help with managing uh, registration or whatever. Like you're going to be there in person to help with that. And so you're going to start giving back little by little. You're going to start attending these conferences. You're going to pick up things. You're going to start meeting people. And that's how you're going to get started. You're not going to just be like, hey, company A, I'm going to uh, apply to this job that I absolutely am not qualified for. And then expect to actually get a call back because it's not going to happen. There's thousands of people just like you who are trying to do the same thing. What you want to do is spend your time on building that experience. And by that is giving back to different communities. That working group, by the way, that idea is so like unheard of. Like people, I, I know somebody who did this. They had no experience in cybersecurity and they joined a working group for NIST. I think it was NIST. And they helped with a white paper. And it was really like a very simple white paper. It was basically like how access controls in the cloud help with security posture. It was like something so basic, right? And something that all they did was research online and then write up three or four paragraphs and their name is in a white paper now. And that's how they got their first job. It's like, look, I contributed to this NIST working paper. And by the way, remember what I said, NIST is like one of the most well-known and resourceful uh, organizations out there. And in terms of cybersecurity industry, if you have that on your your resume, people are going to look up and be like, oh my God, they wrote a white paper for NIST, or at least they're co-authored on this. And yes, there are like 20 other co-authors, but her name is on the white paper. Like it'll never be taken away from her. And she can put that on her resume. And that counts as experience because you are giving back. So that's all that experience is. If you're doing a home lab, this is what I suggest. You, you build a home lab, like say you have AWS, that free stuff that I told you about. You're going to create something and you're going to learn something about it. So you either like, here's a really good one. Um, create a honeypot. So actually there's free honeypot code that you can actually use. It's on GitHub. Uh, it's like TC, I forget what the name is, TC honeypot or something like this. T something T honeypot. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's, it's just open source. All you have to do is like, uh, run some scripts to create a Docker container that actually creates the honeypot for you in AWS. Don't worry if that was all confusing for you. It's, it's all available online. So if you just Google how to create a honeypot in AWS for free, they're gonna, there's going to be an article about this, like a medium.com article. You're going to follow step-by-step step how to do this. And then once you have that honeypot running, let, let the honeypot run for like a couple of weeks and then see what kind of traffic you see, right? And then from there, you're going to actually write about it. And this is the best part. Like you have your home lab, then you, you, do something with it, and then you're going to write about it, or you're going to tell someone about it, or you're going to make a YouTube video about it. Do something where you are now showing people what you learned and that you're putting it out there. Just be like, hey, this is what I found about my honeypot. Most of the traffic, most of malicious traffic is coming from whatever country it is. Like when I ran the honeypot years ago, I found like, um, most of the malicious traffic was coming from Germany. And I was like, well, I didn't expect that. And then I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because Germany doesn't have an, a, a, you know, those rules and those laws that we have here in the United States about like privacy and whatever. They have like stricter rules and stuff. So they can do that and get away with it. Like it's pretty funny. Um, but I expected that traffic to come from like the the standard ones, like North Korea and China and like all the bad guys, right? Russia, um, North Korea. Did I say North Korea already? Whatever. Um, so that's what I expected to see, but I saw Germany. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And so I wrote about that on LinkedIn one time. So 
I am blabbing and I apologize. This is what happens when you have too much coffee. It's um, okay. Marta, there yes. is a question from Robin Gamble. Mind if I just read this really quick? We have only sure. nine minutes left. Robin says, do you think it's possible to stay out of programming being cybersecurity? Okay, so most of the jobs in cybersecurity are going to be technical, and I will say, if you want to, if you want to move up in your career, you're going to have to learn program. But to get started in cybersecurity without learning programming, I think it is possible. I've hired people in, in this job to do IT help desk, um, which I do consider cybersecurity, by the way, and I'll explain that in a second. And I've hired people to do like intern work that is not technical. There is no need for them to do any coding. It's just more asset management and making sure things get done the way they should be doing, like following, creating playbooks and stuff like this. Um, so it is possible to get in, but if you want to improve your career in cybersecurity, you're going to have to learn programming. It is not scary. It is like, people think this is a scary thing. It really isn't. Like my kid is in, he started coding when he was like in second grade, right? Because there's these coding programs that little kids can do. Uh, it's not hard. Like if a little kid can do it, you could do it. It is not difficult. It looks hard because it, it looks like all text, but it, in a certain way, it's just like another language. And if you just get familiar with how the language is put together, you're going to be fine. You're absolutely fine. There is nothing genius about people who actually know how to program. Uh, something that you avoid. I would definitely, Robin, take that and just be like, all right, I'm avoiding it now, but I know if I want to improve my career in cybersecurity, that's something I need to get better on. And really just put your foot in, like your toe in the water and be like, can I do uh, like a little kid's coding program? Can I do that? And then you're going to find like, these games are fun. This is actually really kind of cute. They MIT has a free program called Scratch. You can sign up for an account on Scratch. And MIT has all these things in these games and it's not hard at all like if a second grader can do it you can do it all right um let's see robert says sorry about eh, robert hello i'm working in the medical field want to transition i have a six-month internship in it how hard will it break into the field it really just depends on you robert i really like to say like your geography is your destiny so if you're in like the middle of nowhere it's gonna be a lot harder but you already have that six-month internship in it that's actually really good not a lot of people have that as career changers. So if, if you're in an area that has um, a lot of different IT jobs, like the West Coast or the East Coast and not kind of in the middle of the country, you're going to get a lot more opportunities. Um, say like in the Boston area, it's got a really, really strong um, startup uh, community. Like a lot of different startups are there in Boston. And then you've got Silicon Valley. You've got um, other areas of the country that are kind of starting to build up their cyber, or, I'm sorry, their, their IT and their software and their SaaS stuff. Um, you really just have to find where those areas are in the country. And yes, people are trying to hire for return to office. So you're not going to get those remote opportunities as much. If you are near an area, like a geographical area in the, in the States that has a lot of these jobs, that's going to be good for you. But if you're not, then that's going to be tough. Um, so that's uh, John says, can I send you my resume on LinkedIn? So John, I don't do this as much as I used to, and I would, I wish I could, but there might be other people like Elaine or Marta that could be able to help you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just unable to do that right now at this time. Um, Niket says, how to get the experience from project trainings to bypass experience requires to get into SOC. I think that was the original question about the SOC analyst stuff. Um, SOC analyst is, is very popular for entry-level people, and there's a lot of these uh, they're called MSSPs, Managed Security Service Providers. And they are basically small companies that get rented out by big companies to help them with their SOC, their um, security operations center. And you're doing basically like tier one stuff, which just means you are handling security alerts coming from a lot of different tools. And then you're you're elevating anything that seems more suspicious to tier two. So you're doing tier one stuff. Um, in very rare instances, will a SOC analyst be doing more than that? But you're going to get paid by the hour. You're going to have really terrible shift work. You're going to be not having the greatest time. I think SOC analyst is probably the hardest role in cybersecurity, quite honestly. Um, but if that's what you want to do, that's totally fine. That's a, a good entryway to get into cybersecurity, but it is a um, couple of years of hard work there. What kind of experience do you need? You're not going to bypass those experience requirements, by the way. The more experience, the better. You don't want to think about bypassing it. But again, thinking about it from a home lab, working group, um, helping with conferences, writing out information uh, and letting people consume your information rather than just doing training, just doing webinars, just doing stuff like where you're taking information from others. You want to start giving information back to others, and that's how you build out your resume. Okay. Um, LQ Harris says, I want to transition to an Azure cloud security analyst. Are there certs after security plus I should be 
should have before applying. So the search question is like super, um, I don't like that question just because you're thinking about it from the wrong way, LQ. Like you don't want to just get the certs to get the job. You want the certs to help you learn the information because it's going to help apply for the job. So Azure is going to have their own their own um, certifications that you can get. There's like AWS has one. It's like cloud practitioner. It's a very basic one. <clears throat> I'm sure Azure has something similar. I'm sure they have something similar for like basic cloud security stuff too. So your cloud practitioners one is like a general AWS all the services kind of thing in one giant thing. It's like a definition certification. So it's going to like, it's going to be okay to have your own resume, but it's not going to make you any different from anyone else. What I'd rather you spend your time on is again, getting that experience by doing home labs, uh, uh, working groups, white papers, you know, writing things online, um, giving back to the community. That's where you should be spending your time. Don't look at certs to be like the gate, the key to opening these doors for you because it just won't. There's so many people with the same exact things and you're not going to stand out. The only way you're going to stand out is if you have that experience. And again, it's okay not to have that full-time experience. It's, it's great if you have that full-time experience, but that's that catch-22. You won't be able to get in without that full-time experience to begin with. So rely less on the certification Notifications and more on building that that information I shared with you before. Home labs, working groups, conferences, like helping out with those kind of thing. Um, open source projects. There's if you if anyone here is interested in application security, which is my favorite domain, there's something called OWASP. If you haven't heard about OWASP, definitely take a look at it. It stands for Open Web Application Security Project. O W A S P. It's super popular. It's been around for more than maybe a decade and a half by now. And there's different areas within OWASP that you can volunteer for. And they normally take anybody to help with testing and like help vetting information and stuff like that. And that's where you want to start. You want to start with like, be like, hey, I want to volunteer for OWASP. Is there any opportunity for me to do that? And you're going to contact the OWASP leaders and there's chapters all over the world. You're going to attend an OWASP meeting, right? And you're going to just say like, how can I get it? And this is for people who are interested in application security or Penetration testing, kind of the same thing. Um, let's see. That's LQ's question. And I, I think I have time for one more, Marta. I know I've been going super fast. Ooh, uh, let me just pick the last one here. Um, well, Joe asked a question. I, don't, I, I do want to answer this one just because Joe is here. What do you feel is the biggest issue right now in the ways companies are spending money on tools, products versus investing in the people and processes? That's going to be a company dependent thing. I don't think there's like a generic statement that I can make and be like, oh yeah, companies are doing this all wrong because I just don't know. I don't have that data. Um, but it, what it does seem like, and I've heard this anecdotally, and I've also done my own research by doing surveys and stuff where companies don't have enough security people on their teams. And the research and studies actually approve this, where we have a shortfall of like millions of jobs in cybersecurity and we need more people, right? That's like the whole point of you guys wanting to get into cybersecurity in the first place. So it's probably true that companies are spending too little on people and more too much on the tools, which is ironic because then you don't have the people to actually run the tools. So it, yeah, there's another stat that says like only 15% of all cybersecurity tools are used to the amount that they should be, which is a hundred percent, right? Um, okay, one more question. Let's see. Ellie Ross says, <clears throat> what is the best way to get an internship? <clears throat> And these are so rare. This is like 0.1% of all the entry-level jobs out there. They're so, so rare. If you're coming from a college uh, program, you're, that's going to be the best way. But there are definitely programs, and I found these. Bigger companies have these programs where they have like career transitions. So what this is what I normally do or I tell people to do is like look at the big companies in your area. Maybe they have a headquarters or like a large presence. Um, like uh, like a Home Depot or Walmart or bigger software companies like Oracle and healthcare companies like um, uh, Merck. You're like, these are the bigger companies in your area, right? Every every town's going to have a big one, hopefully. And, and then you're going to look on their career site and you're going to be like, oh, I wonder what kind of programs they have for career tra transitioners or what kind of internships they might have. And they will be out there. Like I'm near Delaware and that's basically where all the credit card companies are. Each one of them literally has programs for how to build out, uh, how to how to transition as an intern. And they have these internship programs. They're focused on like veterans, veterans. Uh, 
uh, single moms, like th these are like very specific programs. Those are the ones that you're going to find and look for. And interestingly, these jobs are not posted on Indeed and they're not posted on LinkedIn as much. So you have to go to each one of the career sites on each one of those companies and find them. So it does take a little bit of Google work. And that's probably the easiest way to start like applying for these internships and kind of cross your fingers that no one else is applying all the thousands of people in your position. Just hopefully no one else gets. And then you're going to hopefully get an internship. Another way is just to simply ask like um I've, I've heard this work i've never actually tried this or seen this done but i've uh, or personally seen this done but um companies with jobs that have been open for a long time like for months and months and months they're still going to need help so what you could do is try to get through your network to contact that hiring manager and be like hey hiring manager i noticed that this job has been open for a few months is there any way i could act as an intern just in the temporary in the in the time that you're looking for a full-time person is there anything i can be doing as an intern i'm willing to work hourly only 30 hours a week whatever it is to like keep you under that benefits minimum right like uh corporate so uh, as long as you're you're doing that and you're reaching out to your network and and asking to be like is there any way we can do an internship for you uh that actually I, I have heard this happen and heard this work so but this was like two years ago <laughs> I don't know I don't want to like give you guys bad information but the worst they could say is no honestly but you also don't want to piss them off and be like hey but you know Naomi said that I would get an internship just by asking you like no that's not true you still want to be cool about it don't be crazy And that